think it's important anybody who wants to kind of trace the roots of development and peace to kind of go back to 1967. You had the Canadian bishops coming back from Rome. They'd met the bishops from the south and they'd seen, number one, the level of poverty in the south, but they'd also seen the church in action working to overcome that poverty. And they decided out of that that they really would try as bishops to do something in Canada. Les années 60, c'était la fin du Concile Vatican II qui a donné un grand espoir à l'Église. J'aimerais rendre témoignage au pape Paul VI. Il a dit cette phrase à la fin de son discours qui est resté vraiment célèbre. Désormais, le nouveau nom de la paix, c'est le développement. Vatican II was so important for me, and I think because it opened, as they said, it opened up the dustbins, took the dust out of the church, and it really spoke to me about social justice. I think I always had inside of me this, I hated in, in injustices, and it seemed now the church was on the right path. <laughs> At the same time in Canadian society, more generally, we were having Expo 67. We were celebrating our 100th anniversary. We were excited about the world with big political changes coming in. So people kind of had an optimism and a sense that we can take on the world, we can do things, we can make a better life for everybody. And development is peace kind of was given birth in that kind of a, a climate. The man who brought a kind of a very different vision of what helping the poor was all about was Romeo Meoni. Romeo was the first director of development and peace. So the orientation that the organization took on very quickly is we are here to work together with the poor. Not even when people say give them a hand up and all that stuff, no. We are equals, we are human, we both have dignity, we both have a right to a decent future. It took some time to, for me to become aware of that change in philosophy because all of a sudden we were being told, or we were, it was being suggested that it was far better to, to invest in the efforts of people in the third world who were planning their own future. It's a much different philosophy than charity. If there was a famine in Bangladesh, you didn't wait five months to find out about it. You knew when it was happening because the media was there. Les gens étaient de plus en plus conscients qu'il y avait des, des inégalités criantes dans la société. If you look at development and peace in terms of how it was created, the bishop said, let's, let's create something, and they had the first Share Lent campaign. They put together what they understood at the time. How can we help the poor? On sait bien qu'avant ça, le carême, comme nos grands-parents en parlaient, c'était un temps de privation personnelle. Mais là, avec l'idée que le développement, c'était le nouveau nom de la paix, comme disait le pape Paul VI, le carême devenait une occasion d'une solidarité plus grande avec les pays du Tiers-Monde. There was that whole transition from being a colony to being independent uh, countries. So it was a very exciting time, uh, but at the same time, it was a very difficult time for these countries who were trying to adjust and to uh, become an independent state rather than a colony. The Biafran War, of course, was raging at the time, and it was all over the news and, and great human suffering. And so that was probably the first instance where development and peace was engaged in common action with the other churches. We became involved in a thing called Canner Relief, which actually bought an airplane and was flying aid and assistance into Biafra. I, I think that what, what Development and Peace had allowed people to do was, was to have that, uh, that contact that they wouldn't have had otherwise. See, it's a contact you wouldn't have by reading in the newspaper. A year later, with some time and people in, in place and an ability to think, they began to develop a strategy as to how does the, the contribution and the generosity of Canadians actually empower people. It allowed that people take conscience that it wasn't a hazard, it wasn't the destiny that they had on the dos, but it was rather an exploitation organized by the countries of the north. It was interpellated. Suddenly I realized that my life and how I live affects people elsewhere. It was like a turnaround in my life and I've been grateful to Development and Peace for the way over the years they have broadened, broadened our perceptions. Mm -hmm.
Development and Peace for me was based on justice and not charity. That was number one. We see so many people are taken by charity and they feel good because they can give people things. And I always say to people, do you know those people have so many talents? And what I really agree with DMP is that development and peace, they go there and they respect the people. They spend time to get to know what the people want and need. Development and peace national was the first person of the world. For example, Don Fragoso, who came from Brazil, and then Monseigneur Camara. C'est sûr que ce Camara, il disait ce qu'il avait à dire. Il dit, quand on parle de charité, tout va bien. Mais quand on dit où elle est la justice, Là, on dérange du monde. The campaigns reached a lot of people, reached the Catholic constituency, and brought to them a message that could have been entirely new to them. For example, again, the landless movement in Brazil. Certainly in the 70s and 80s, um, there were many military dictatorships in South America. And again, uh, Anyone who worked for civil rights uh, and economic uh, empowerment were seen as a threat to those elites. Two of the most important uh, in terms of solidarity of fall action were the one for Argentina for the disappeared people. And then the, the grandmothers of uh, Plaza de Mayo. Grandkids were disappearing. The grandmothers got together to try and find out what were happening to their grandkids. The parents, in this case, were being assassinated by the regime. The grandmothers came for support and solidarity in Canada, and they found it with the Catholic Women's League. At that time, 100,000 plus women. That idea of taking a list of 31, 31 people who were missing and on the day of your birthday, you picked that person and you wrote to the government to say, we know this person is missing. Please be accountable and tell us what has happened to this person. Show me how one letter from one person multiplied by 10,000 can make a big difference. And it had an effect on the government and some of the grandchildren were found. I thought that was a very clever idea. I do remember quite well is the one on militarization. And it hasn't got better. I believe the Americans spend for every tax dollar, they spend between 40 to 50% on the military. You know, when you've got an empire, you have to protect your empire. You could take that money for a year that is spent on the military and you could bring every person up to a, a standard of Europe. It's a colossal amount of money. When I began as an animator, the first campaign I was involved in was the anti-apartheid in South Africa. And um, of course, it was reaching a crescendo and uh, I was very proud of the fact that uh, Development Peace was part of helping um, South Africa take off the yoke, I guess, of apartheid. It impresses a government when they receive hundreds of thousands of letters, cards, signatures or whatever. It's a message to them that a significant number of people want change. So I'm all in favor very, very effective campaigns. Et puis ça s'est concrétisé de manière étonnante et extraordinaire avec la fin de l'apartheid. I greet you all in the name of peace, democracy and freedom for all. D'ailleurs, vous savez aussi que M. Nelson Mandela, lorsqu'il était élu président, a envoyé une lettre de remerciement à Développement Impair. Et ça, ça m'avait vraiment impressionné.
campaign that I remember most was uh, in support of landless movement in Brazil. I had the pleasure of going with a group of Saskatchewan Development and Peace volunteers to Brazil. And these were people who um, had no land and were trying to get land from these huge estate landowners. The paramilitary, the government's paramilitary, came in from one side of the 700 families and the uh, and the gun and the gunmen for the landowners came from the other side, and they killed 19 Centair leaders. And there were millions of acres of land that were not being used for anything at all. And all these people wanted these unemployed and poverty-stricken people. All they wanted was to have a chance to have a little piece of land so they could grow their own food. Of course, we had the opportunity to go over there and and, and visit. Uh, people in the area, a few families that had, had made the move, and that was very interesting. Une autre campagne, celle où on demandait que les compagnies euh, manufacturières comme Nike et Lévi-Strauss adoptent un code d'éthique pour que soit éviter les situations où on, ils auraient engagé des enfants pour produire des, des espadrilles ou produire des vêtements. Développement épais avaient des partenaires dans ces pays-là et c'était nos partenaires qui avaient rapporté ces situations-là de mauvaises conditions de travail dans les usines de sous-traitance à Développement épais. Et le slogan était « Les personnes d'abord ». Quel prix a été payé par les gens qui ont fait ces vêtements-là et que moi j'achète? Lorsqu'on a commencé la campagne, les élèves étaient vraiment surpris. T'sais, ils avaient des Nike dans les pieds, ils avaient des, des vêtements Lévi-Strauss, et puis là, bien, ils, ils comprenaient plus l'impact que ça pouvait avoir. Le développement épais faisait signer des pétitions. C'était un mouvement qui, qui se faisait à la grandeur du Canada. Levi's et Nike ont envoyé une lettre personnel à chaque personne qui avait apposé sa signature sur chacune de ces pétitions-là. Au début des années 2000, on sortait de la grande campagne du Jubilé qui incitait toutes les personnes à favoriser les pauvres, à aider les démunis, à libérer les peuples de leur esclavage. Alors, Développement épais, fidèle à son option pour les pauvres, les exclus, a décidé de mettre sur pied une grande campagne de trois ans. Le monde n'est pas à vendre. Les trois thèmes développés, les compagnies minières, les semences et l'eau. The mining campaign was the first campaign that I ever got involved with with Development and Peace. Having to move from your home or having your home, you know, your water poisoned and how that can potently affect you for things that are mined that we use here in the north just really got me, to me emotionally, I think. It really made me understand the need for us to help because we're the ones that are contributing to these issues. We're the ones that are consuming these consumer goods that need to be mined. East Timor was a former Portuguese colony. In 1974, when they were about to declare independence, the Indonesian uh, military invaded. Uh, so development and peace played a role in their struggle for self-determination and independence. On May 20, 2002, East Timor became uh, the first new country of the millennium. And I was there, uh, invited to uh, participate uh, in the uh, inauguration for the restoration of uh, independence. <laughs> on December 26, uh, 2004, a gigantic tsunami hit uh, 14 countries. India, Sri Lanka, Thailand, and of course, Indonesia, which is the, the, the nearest to the uh, epicenter of the uh, earthquake. We raised over close to $20 million for the recovery and reconstruction. In 2005, Les 3300 maisons étaient reconstruites, les rues repavées. Et... Alors c'est un projet 
où toute la population a été consultée, mise à, à, à partie. And it was also the first time that Development and Peace was involved in supporting a, what we call people, community-driven reconstruction, where people are actually in charge of their recovery and reconstruction. En Haïti, il y a eu un gros tremblement de terre en 2010. Le tremblement de terre a eu lieu principalement à Port-au-Prince. Alors, les populations se, se sont déplacées dans moult et un petit village, mais là où il n'y avait pas de structure pour les accueillir et pas de nourriture. Alors, plusieurs organismes qui sont des partenaires de développement épais ont mis sur pied de la formation pour que les gens puissent développer eux-mêmes leur lopin de terre. Alors, c'est ce qu'on appelle la souveraineté alimentaire. The campaign that inspired me the most was the uh, food sovereignty campaign. Because I learned so much about how world systems actually work. I learned that, you know, hunger, we think it's caused by a lack of food, but really it's caused by a broken system and how many different ways people go hungry and how people can actually feed themselves in food sovereignty. And I think we have this idea that in the West that we need to fix things, that people in the Global South are dependent on us. But really, if we let them, they can feed themselves sufficiently. And I think that's where I really like the work of development and peace and what we were doing. And I really thought like this is a way to have sustainable development, to have people feed themselves and be able to be proud of the fact that they're feeding themselves. I would just congratulate uh, Development and Peace for standing on the side of the poor and to know that is the right thing to do and we want to continue to uh, encourage Development and Peace to think long term and to create more permanent and more structured and more transforming partnerships to enable civil society and citizens in developing countries to hold their governments accountable. Aujourd'hui, dans un monde marqué encore par tellement de guerres et de violences, euh, développement et paix continuent à avoir une importance extrêmement grande dans la lutte pour le développement de tous les peuples. Et c'est une opportunité importante pour agradecer aussi à nos compagnons de Desarrollo et Paz qui nous ont apoyé avec cette école pour fortaliser nos en, en nuestros ejercicios propios en el empoderamiento de las mujeres. Son, son oportunidades que nosotros eh, las dinamizamos y que nos ayudan a continuar en la construcción de una vida digna y dignificada en nuestro territorio. Nos pas de développement épais seulement tant que bailleurs, mais nous sommes tant que vraiment de patriotes comme nous même pour l'autre Haïti. C'est sûr que nous sommes ouverts à la solidarité internationale. La solidarité internationale viendra en apport. Et nous devons savoir que notre destinée doit être notre propre ouvrage. Pour moi, pour Contras, partnership means that uh, it is a mutual engagement, mutual cooperation, so that we can work collaboratively in the partnership, in the enrichment process for the benefit of the people. Satu, dua, tiga, kami dari Koalisi Perempuan Indonesia mengucapkan Selamat Ulang Tahun Development and Peace! Well, I think I'm so fortunate to be part of that, the community of development and peace. You meet someone you've never met before and you feel that you're best friends. <laughs> Because you can speak on issues that are very similar viewpoint and you can feel a real sense of community. On fait appel à notre intelligence, on nous explique, on nous fait confiance pour comprendre là, ce qui n'est pas nécessairement facile à comprendre. It's a program that, that promotes confidence. If we work together, in the right way, we can do a lot of good. Et puis voir la générosité des gens qui y ont travaillé, des centaines et des centaines de personnes et des milliers, c'est ça qui a fortifié ma foi. Working consciously with young people to 
tell them what development of peace is all about and to get them active in development of peace is very important. Well, I continue to be involved with development peace because I believe in what they do. As an organization, we believe in going to the grassroots and to try and make long-term change uh, for not only the people but for the entire world. I think my wish is just for development and peace to grow and become more vibrant and stay rooted in its mission and just go through the next 50 years even stronger and more beautiful. Ce courant de solidarité là, qui, qui bouille dans nos veines, bien, que ça continue puis qu'on ne soit pas les, les, les dinosaures d'une espèce qui s'éteint, mais qu'on soit vraiment des personnes qui portent ce message-là comme des prophètes puis qui permettent à des jeunes de poursuivre cette action-là pour que la paix et le développement puissent grandir.